Hello, welcome to the Sulong Online Sessions. I am Ray Sotelo, the lay uh, BEC coordinator of the Diocese of San Pablo. Welcome to the online Sulong Sessions as we, for today, will discuss the topic on tights. Do we tight or are we tight? In other words, we will be talking about money as a test of spiritual life. Jesus also reminded us one time in the Gospel of St. Luke na tayong mga tao ay masyadong natetemp kuminsan sa pagiging uh, materialistic. And our society is really, really a big temptation for us dahil nga tayo ay nagahanap ng kaparaanan para tayo kumita. Pero pinapaalalahanan tayo ng ating Panginoong Jesus sa Luke chapter 12, 19 to 21, where He says, in reminding the rich fool about this. Then I may say to myself, my friend, you have a lot of good things put by for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be taken. Tell me, who shall get all you have put aside? Thus, it will be for the one who store up treasure for himself, but is not rich in what matters to God. Anong ibig sabihin nito, mga kapatid? Pinapaalalahanan tayo ng Panginoon that money is not everything. We have to consider God and make, par, uh, make our life focus also on God having a, an important part in our life. It is not a question of how much money that we have. It is actually a question where your heart is and what you do with what you have. We are reminded by the Catechism of the Catholic Church sa 2041 about the five precepts of the Church. Ano po nakalagay doon? The precepts of the Church are set in the context of a moral life bound to and nourished by liturgical life. The obligatory character of these positive laws decreed by the pastoral authorities is meant to guarantee to the faithful the indispensable minimum, mind you, brothers and sisters, minimum in the spirit of prayer and moral effort in the growth in love of God and neighbor. Again, that is taken from uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church 2041. Ano pong ang pinapaalala sa atin? Meron po tayong actualing batas bilang mga katoliko na dapat sinusunod. And these are the minimum. Ano po yung five precepts? Number one, you shall attend Mass on Sundays and on Holy Days of Obligation and rest from servile labor. Number two, you shall confess your sins at least once a year. Number three, you shall receive the sacrament of Eucharist, at least during the Easter season. And number four, you shall observe the days of fasting and abstinence established by the Church. Itong number five, mga kapatid, itong madalas na hindi natin napag-uusapan. You shall help to provide for the needs of the Church. Mga kapatid, bilang mga Katoliko, meron tayong responsibilidad na pananagutan na dapat suportahan natin ang ating simbahan. Actually, each of these precepts of the Catholic Church is a requirement. Together with the Ten Commandments, they represent the minimum level of moral living. Intentional violation of the precepts or the commandments is a grave matter, meaning mortal sin. So mind you, brothers and sisters, intentional negligence. Ibig sabihin, pag pinapabayaan natin itong batas na to o itong mga batas na to, tayo ay maaaring nagkakasala. Wise stewardship means having your priorities in godly order. Hindi naman po inaalis o tinatanggal sa atin ang alamin kung ano yung mga pangangailangan at humanap ng kaparaanan upang matugunan ang mga ito sa pamagitan ng paghahanap buhay. Pero, tayo ay hinahamon. Tayo ba ay tama at akma lamang ang pagtingin sa 
pera or ang pera mismo minsan ay dinidiyos natin. We are also reminded in Mark chapter 12 verse 41 to 43. Ito, minsan napapatawa ako eh kasi may pagkamarites din pala ang Panginoong Jesus. In this scene sa Mark 12, 21 to 43, Jesus is seen at the temple. And in the temple, that is beside the temple treasure, Jesus was watching at an old woman. Tinitingnan niya, actually, hindi lang yung old woman. Napansin niya yung old woman. Pero marami siyang nakitang mga, mga tao na nagbibigay ng kanilang mga alay sa templo. At itong nakalagay doon. In Mark 12, 41 to 43, He sat down opposite the treasury. Ito nakakatuwa eksena ito. May pagkamarites ang Panginoong Yesus. Truly I tell you that the poor widow put more in the offering box than all the others. For the others put in what they had to spare. Yung iba daw nagbibigay lang. Pansin na pansin niya yung biga. Yung iba nagbibigay lang. Kung ano yung kaya lang nilang ibigay na sobra. Pero itong napansin niya. Sabi ng Panginoong Yesus. The poor, as she is, put in all she had. She gave all she had to live on. Mga kapatid, anong ibig parating sa atin ng Panginoon, para, para, Panginoon natin? God keenly watches. He is interested on what? On the purpose of why we give. Hindi lang yung tayo ay nagbibigay. Bakit tayo nagbibigay? Ano ang laman ng ating puso sa ating pagbibigay? Ito ba ay taos sa puso, kusang loob, o tayo ay napipilitan lamang? Dito sa Bible verse na to sinasabi na mas nababasa ng Panginoon ng ating puso. Kaya ang tinatanong is, ano ba talaga ang kulay ng ating mga puso sa ating pagbibigay sa ating Panginoon? In Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, it says, For your heart will always be where your riches are. Ano pong ibig sabihin nun? Ano ba ang kulay ng iyong puso? Ano ba ang interes mo? Dahil kung anong interes mo, yun ang nasa sa puso mo. Yun ang nababasa ng ating Panginoon. If Christ truly is your master, you will agree with what St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do it all for God's glory. Itong hamon sa ating mga Kristiyano, mga kapatid. Sa ating mga iisipin, sa ating mga sasabihin, at sa ating mga gagawin. Ano ba talaga ang intensyon mo? Bakit mo ginagawa ito? Tayong mga Kristiyano, lalo't mga Katoliko, ay hinahamon. Bago mo isipin, bago mo sabihin, bago mo gawin. Alalahanin mong lagi kung si Jesus ang nasa lugar mo, paano niya kaya ito iisipin, paano niya kaya ito sasabihin, at paano niya kaya ito gagawin. Brothers and sisters, may tatlong klase ng pagbibigay or there are three types of giving. So, let us turn to scriptures again and let us learn a lot from scriptures. Yung unang paraan ng pagbibigay o klase ng pagbibigay ay ang tinatawag na nominal contributions. Ano yung nominal contributions? Ito po yung mga believers na tinatawag but not belongers. Ulitin ko. Nomal, nominal contributions. Ano ba yun? Believers but not belongers. They have a commitment to their faith but not necessarily a commitment to the church or their community. These are people who are coming to the church or community seeking to share in the message of God's love, hope, and blessings, but are not interested in fully participating as responsible members of the church or community. Anong ibig sabihin noon, mga kapatid? Itong mga nominal contributors or contributions, ito yung mga mananampalataya o mga kaisa, pero sa kanila ay Optional yung pagbibigay. Ano po? They give whatever and whenever. Kung bagay, kung masumpungon laang. Yun, na, yun po ang mga nominal contributions or contributors. They are believers but they are not really belongers. Magbibigay lang, pangkursunada lang. 
Pero pag makikinabang, kaisa sa pakinabang sa mga turo at aral ng simbahan. Another is tithing. Pero siguro, hopefully with this session, we can put a little light ano po, dun sa konsepto ng tithing. In the book of Genesis, the Hebrew word translated tithe, listen, did not refer to a required offering or a divine commandment or an ordinance. Instead, the term refers to a voluntary offering. Historically, the idea of giving a, a tent to a deity was a common pagan custom. Yan po ay gawain na noon. For nearly all ancient cultures, the number 10 was the symbol of completeness. Typically, when pagan worshippers wanted to give an offering to their deity, they would give a tenth because that symbolized their giving of everything. Such was practiced long before the days of the Hebrew patriarchs. Therefore, one cannot really argue that God in the book of Genesis originated and specially mandated tithing as a permanent principle. God chose the Levites to be priests to operate the temple and lead the theocracy of Israel, the nation run by God. The tithe was the 10% taxation. Ulitin ko po. The tithe was the 10% taxation used to supply the needs of the Levites because they had no livelihood and received no territory when Moses divided the land among the 12 tribes. Essentially, the Israelites gave a tithe every year, listen, my brothers and sisters, to support those who ran their government. The first tithe, so there are three kinds of tithes. The first tithe was a mandatory one-tenth of the people's produce and animals. If they didn't give the tithe, the Jews were robbing God because it belonged to Him. Kaya nga yun ang, quote, ang, ang context ng Malachi 3, chapter 3, verse 8. Ninanakawan nyo, bakit? Hindi nyo kasi ibinibigay yung sa Panginoon. Kaya nga, they were robbing God. E saan ba galing mga hayop na yon? Saan ba galing yung mga bunga ng lupa? Kung di sa Panginoon, hindi mo binibigay sa kanya, ninanakawan mo siya. Kanya yun eh. And then, in the Deuteronomy chapter 12, 10, 11, and then 17 to 18, it refers to a second annual tithe the Israelites had to pay. The second tithe was for the sake of the Jews' national religious worship. And it also promoted national unity and fellowship. Ito yung pangatlo. In the Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 28 to 29, it refers to a third tithe. The third tithe was known as the welfare tithe or poor tithe and was used to help the strangers, the fatherless, and the widowed. So, brothers and sisters, the first three tithes mentioned during Moses' time were nothing more than taxes and should not be confused with voluntary giving or tithing to the Lord. Those tithes amounted to mandatory taxation that was used to fund Israel's divinely instituted human governments. And then the number three, ito po ang sa panahon ni Jesus. Ito yung tinatawag na Voluntary giving, and this is yung time na ni Jesus. Required giving in Jesus' time still existed nung nabubuhay si Jesus. He was still operating dito sa sistema ng taxation na to. Because required giving in the time of Jesus still existed in the form of the Mosaic taxation system. The theocracy was still operative. The Levites, Pharisees, and the Sadducees possess all the real political power and ran the government under the direction of the occupying Romans. Naalala niyo po yon sa Bible, even Jesus paid the temple tax. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, 
This is an excellent summary of how we should give to the Lord. And I quote, You should each give then as you have decided, not with regret or out of sense of duty, for God loves the one who gives gladly. In other translation, mas familiar kayo na, God loves a cheerful giver. So, we ask, why should we give? God commands us to give for the support of those whom He sends to serve us, teach us, and lead us in the church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 14, I quote, In the same way, the Lord has ordered that those who preach the gospel should get their living from it. Ibig sabihin, yung mga nagpapadala ng mabuting balita ay dapat suportahan, tulungan. Abay, kailangan din naman nila talagang mabuhay at makapagpatuloy. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 6, If you are being taught, kung tayo ay tinuturuan, the Christian message, you should share all the good things you have with your teachers. Ibig sabihin, kung tayo ay nakikinabang, aba, tayo ay magbahagi din at tulungan sila na nagbibigay ng bagay na nakakapakinabang sa atin. So we ask, when should we give? Eh, kailan ho kami magbibigay? Giving should be consistent and systematic, not spasmodic and subjective. Para bagang, magbibigay lang ako pag nililid ako ng spirit. Hello? Or whenever we happen to remember, we should be consistently aware of and responding to the needs of our church or community. Kailangan mag-respond, mag kailangan maging proactive. Kailangan isasama na natin ito sa budget natin. Ano? Kapag tayo ay may nakukuha na kumikita tayo, at dapat pala kasama na sa budget natin yung pagbibigay at suporta sa ating simbahan. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5, it is said, Come as living stones and let yourselves be used in building. Let yourselves be used in building the spiritual temple where you will serve as holy priests to offer spiritual and acceptable sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ. How much should we give? <laughs> Yun palagi tinatanong, how much? God is always pleased when His people follow the basic guidelines of proportional and sacrificial giving. We are to decide with joy, decide with joy what to give. So mga kapatid, kung ito ay nilalaan mo na, hindi yung nagugulat ka o nabibigla ka, pero yung nilalaan mo na, itabi mo na kung ano yung ibibigay mo. So how much? We are guided by 2 Corinthians Chapter 9, verse 7, You should each give then as you have decided, not with regret or out of a sense of duty, for God loves you know, a cheerful giver. Mas maganda yung magbibig, magbibigay ka dahil kusang loob at yun ang nilalaman ng puso mo. How should we give? Paano? In 1 Corinthians 16, we go back to that every Sunday. Mga kapatid, minimum every Sunday, kaya pala tayo no, pag linggo, meron palang um, umiikot na supot na ganun. Kasi nga naman, biblical pala yun. Every Sunday, each of you must put aside. Mga kapatid, put aside. Ibig sabihin, kung meron ka natanggap ng lunes, martes, merkeles, webes, o biyernes, magtabi ka na doon kung alin yung ibibigay mo sa Panginoon. Huwag yung paglinggo, nagugulat ka kapag dating na nung offertory. How should we protect what's given? We should entrust all of this financial matters to godly and responsible people. Sa atin po, sa ating simbahan, we entrust this to our church leaders, to our pastors, to our shepherds, because we know they will take care of this. Kasi marami po silang pagkakagastusan. Kuryente, tubig, yung mga babayarin, babayaran yung sekretarya, yung mga empleyado at yung maintenance sa simbahan. The church needs our help. Now, anong pakinabang natin? What is the benefit for giving? Anong pangako ng ating Panginoong Yesus? In Luke chapter 6, verse 38, ang sabi ng Panginoon, Give to others and God will give to you. Indeed, you will receive a full measure. Gustong gusto ko po ito sa Tagalog. Kayo ay pagbibigyan ng Panginoon, punong-puno, 
siksik, liglig, at umaapaw. Hindi ho tayo pababayaan ng Panginoon. Kasi nakasulat eh. Hindi kita pababayaan. I will take care of you. Mga kapatid, in Acts chapter 12, verse 35, there is more happiness in giving than in receiving. Finally, brothers and sisters, what is really the underlying truth about giving? Generosity in giving results in a greater reward from God. Mga kapatid, magbigay tayo hindi dahil tayo ay napipilitan. Magbigay tayo dahil may pangangailangan, tulungan. Hindi lamang ang ating mga sarili, huwag tayong makakalimot. At ito ay atas, ito din ay utos. Parte nga, sabi ko nung umpisa, sa limang precepts na simbahan na kung saan ang panglima ay sinasabing, tulungan ninyo ang simbahan na siyang uh, kumikilos para lalong mapalalim at mapaunlad ang buhay pananampalataya. Mga kapatid, tayo po ay inaasahan ng Panginoon na tayo ay magbibigay sang ayon sa nilalaman ng ating mga puso. Hindi ho tayo pinipilit. Pero sabi nga, God really loves a cheerful giver. At kung ano ang kulay ng ating mga puso, doon tayo babasahan ng Panginoon, doon tayo kikilalanin ng Panginoon. Dahil sabi ng Panginoon, hindi kita malilimutan at hindi kita pababayaan. Brothers and sisters, thank you for being part of this sulong session. And we hope you have learned a lot, particularly on our topic, which is giving, or we used to call tithing, which we hope have clarified some issues on it. Make sure, brothers and sisters, to watch the other sulong online sessions as well. At sa inyo mga kapatid, huwag ko kayong magsasawa. Inaanyanyahan po namin kayo. Lagi, makasama namin sa patuloy na paglalakbay, sa patuloy na pagbibigay papuri sa ating Panginoon. Thank you brothers and sisters and God bless us all.